Six miles west of Annapolis, Maryland, there resides an old plantation hidden behind a screen of dense woodland. From the road, the only evidence is a lonely historical marker. What lies beyond, however, is a history so absorbing no simple marker could ever do justice. Hello, my name is Jan Orzum, and I've been studying the local history for over 10 years. I'd like to invite you on a brief trip to Belvoir. In the 350 years it has been cultivated, this striking land has had many owners and has been known by many colorful names. Bear Ridge, The Adventure, Providence, Norwood's Fancy, Wyatt's Ridge, Richard's first discovery, Richard's second discovery. But one name has outlived all of these and has come to define this hidden treasure. It is a simple amalgam of two French words, literally translated beautiful to see. This is Belvoir. Folks would have known Belvoir. They would have known it in Annapolis. They would have known it in Baltimore. They probably even knew it in DC. This would have been a place where people came, not for a night, but for a week or a month. Travelers would have stopped here. They would have caught up on the news. There would have been balls. There would have been tea. There would have been fox hunts. What inspired this proud name, we may never know. Perhaps it was the open meadows, the hills and dales and virgin woodland. Maybe it was the striking banks of the wild, undisturbed Severn. Perhaps the beauty is not in the land itself, but in the honest face of its history, in the thousands of stories all but forgotten in the shadows of time. The Comte de Rochambeau, the nobility general, and 5,000 French soldiers camped on these grounds during the American Revolution, the same ground where the famous painter Robert Hinckley took solace. General Washington's personal camp chest was displayed in the manor house for years before it eventually passed on to the Smithsonian. And the boy who would grow up to write America's national anthem, Francis Scott Key, spent a summer here with his blind grandmother. When Congressman Alexander Hansen and a group of Federalists were mobbed in Baltimore for opposing the War of 1812, they took refuge here in the old manor house. In 1824, French General Lafayette came here to visit his friend, a physician named Henry Maynadier, who had successfully removed a bullet from the general's leg on a Pennsylvania battlefield 47 years before. For almost 200 years, generations of Maryland's distinguished aristocracy conveyed this property from family to family. The Worthingtons, the Hammonds, the Dorseys, the Rosses, the Fitzhughes, the Scots, all held ownership at some point. They built plantations and passed time with card parties and fox hunts. There were outbuildings and houses, stables and livestock. As a working plantation, the house would have been the center of a galaxy of outbuildings, barns, carriage house, overseer's house, and slave quarters. In this field, there would have grown the cash crop of the 18th century, tobacco. By the 19th and 20th century, it would have moved to corn and wheat, strawberries, tomatoes. There's even a cranberry bog. The folks that worked this property were free servants, indentured, and slaves. These were the days of royal suppers, two or three ducks to a man, and goblets of fine old Madeira, wrote the historian John Thomas Scharf. On these grounds, Bryce John Worthington fell in love with his future wife, the beautiful Anne Lee Fitzhugh. Colonel Henry Maynadier and Elizabeth Key were married here. Dr. Joseph Muse Worthington was born here. And Anne Arnold Key, her daughter, and two infant babies are buried here. In 350 years of being parceled and sold, inherited and bequeathed, the estate's size has grown and shrunk and grown again, each successive owner christening the land with a new name. The largest tract of land was called Providence. It measured 6,000 acres. The smallest was Richard's first discovery. It was two acres. 
Ownership of this land has ranged from the American gentry to ordinary citizens, from a Catholic society to a school. The highest recorded sale price for the manor house was $25,000, sold in 1816 to Bryce John Worthington. 100 years later, William Rogers bought it for $5. This land has prospered and struggled, but through it all, the occupants somehow survived and carried on an important part of Maryland history now conveyed to the trust and care of a classical Christian school called Rockbridge Academy. Perhaps the real reason it is Belvoir or beautiful to see is not so much because of the land or the buildings, but because of its legacy, the fact that it has lasted 350 years, because of its rich promise for the future. I'm Jan Orzum. Thank you very much.